Hey everyone, and welcome to another Plotty Time Minnesota. This is number five, and uh, this is mostly going to be a personal review of The Last of Us 2. There will be spoilers on that, but before I really get into The Last of Us 2 and talk about that a little bit, what I want to talk about first is the game that we just, for the episode we just released, it was Gun. Now, Stellar Voice Cast, we went over a lot of this in the episode, so I don't want to retread too much ground. We gave it a 22 out of 81, which is more towards the bottom, but, you know, we're kind of fucking stodgy. Like, Prey is the only thing this year that we got a decent score, and that was 50 out of 81. Uh, I guess we're just... Over towards the bottom, what can I say? I don't know. Maybe it's maybe we pick uh, bad games because they're more fun to talk about. That's also possible. So, this game, I remember playing it when it came out. I played it for PS2. It was in it was the end of the PS2 era. And then I do remember it came out for Xbox 360, but it didn't it never came out for PS3. Now, I remember it looking fine. Like I don't remember the graphics blowing me away, but what I was blown away with was the fact that it was an open world game. This was right before the big open world game rush because Grand Theft Auto uh 3 Vice City San Andreas, this just kicked off something like a something we'd never seen before, especially with like the Assassin's Creed games and these big open worlds. And then you'd add Saints Row as a direct, almost a direct competitor until they realize that it's more fun if we just get wacky instead of a real life sim. But anyway, this was an open world game as a Western, which was completely different than the crime simulators that we played before it. So it was a neat and refreshing change of pace uh i did mention it in the episode but the only real competitor to this was red dead redemption that was that didn't come out for another five years so for a long time this was the only western game in town that had this huge sprawling open world where you could do stuff now the game we present it as the cutscene movie as a straightforward story but it was open world you could do things in different order you know but it's standard open world shit like you had the main missions and then once you do those, it unlocks a bunch of side missions, so on and so forth. I hadn't played it since it came out. It's been years for me. Maybe it would have been nice to do a refresher, but I just kind of watched some gameplay. Kind of remembered it. Uh, some of the characters, like uh, Magruder, was very much just evil for the sake of being evil. He was supposed to be consumed by this quest for immortality, but he sh it was really weird because he was so obsessed with himself becoming immortal that that totally eclipsed any kind of empathy or feeling he'd ever have for a human being they just kill people indiscriminately especially like jenny or she wasn't killed by mcgruder she was killed by a fucking other guy i don't remember his name but i did like that about the story i liked how no characters were really safe in the story and you think jenny's with you and you know you're not going to go through every moment in the whole story with jenny but she seems very helpful and very nice and then she gets murdered pretty soon after you make it to Empire City. But overall, I remember it being a lot better the first time I played through it. Maybe it was different expectations. I do remember the gameplay being fun. I didn't remember it being this arcadey. Maybe because the gameplay I remember from that time was all from Red Dead Redemption, which was more quote-unquote realistic in its depiction. Gun was more of like a hitboxes everywhere... I mean, like, when I say Arcadia, I mean lots of lights, lots of boxes, a lot of things popping at you, lots of weak spots being highlighted, HUD filled with shit, all kinds of stuff like that. So, that's kind of like what I, that's what I mean when I say Arcadia. The gameplay and having fun in the moment overtook everything else. Now, they did hire such a crazy cast list for this. I mean, Thomas Jane, who at the time, I don't remember if this was before or after Punisher, because that's what really put him on the map, but he'd been acting for years before that. He'd been in a lot of stuff. Chris Christopherson, obviously, and there's a bunch more. I don't have it in front of me, but it's a big voice cast. Lots of great, great actors who they pulled in to do voices. But it's very, like, it's forgotten. Like, no one remembers this game, except me for some reason, and, like, a handful of people who played it when it came out. But it doesn't go down in the pantheon of great games of the generation. Maybe it was because it was way late in there. Maybe because it wasn't as good as I remember. I mean, at this point, when this had come out, you already had San Andreas, which was 12 times the map size and so much more shit to do. But whatever. I mean, that's gun. 
We gave it 22 out of 81. That's our metric. 81 stars or high fives, whatever you want to use. But that's our number. So what I want to do now, I'm just going to segue into something that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to expand on, and it is the, this is my personal review for The Last of Us 2. Now, there will be story, you can't really, there's spoilers, you can't talk about this game or what you liked or didn't like without spoiling it. So, I don't know, spoilers. If you want to play the game and you don't want the experience to be ruined for you, as if it hasn't already been online... I mean, a lot of people either have played the game and got what they wanted to out of it. Those were that, that were excited. I feel like at this point, no one's like sitting there. You're like, oh, when it goes down to 40 hours, I'm going to buy it. I'm kicking every other spoiler out of it. Whatever. So, spoilers. Again, last warning. Spoilers for The Last of Us 2. So, let's start with... I'm going to talk about what I liked about it. I really liked... First of all, overall, I really liked the story. I thought it was told in a very interesting way. There were a lot of flashbacks, flash forwards, different character swaps, different points of view of the same conflict. Basically, to give you a quick rundown, you are playing as Ellie for a lot of the game, and then you're playing as Abby for a lot of the game. Now, these are two people on different sides of the conflict. It's later revealed that Abby was the daughter of one of the daughters that Joel killed at the end of The Last of Us 1. The one of the doctors that um, was going to, or at least make a good effort to save humanity, but it would have killed Ellie. And then Joel loses his mind and murders everyone. So a lot of us, we talked about in the podcast, the three of us played it, and all of us have the same opinion that Joel's a piece of shit. And I totally... I hate him. Like, I hate Joel. I hate his guts. I was glad to see him die, which I know is not a popular opinion in this game, which very much confuses me. Because while you do play as him, and you develop this fraternal bond with... Is fraternal the word I'm looking for? Fatherly bond with Ellie. She is a human being that Joel was set to protect... Get her to the Fireflies so that they could use her to make a vaccine. She's immune to the virus. She's the only person that they ever found that was immune. And at the end of the first game, Joel kills all the doctors and scientists because synthesizing or creating the cure would have killed Ellie. So in Joel's mind, he's like, this can't happen. So he murders everybody. He kills fucking everybody just to save Ellie so she doesn't die, which was supremely selfish in so many ways. Joel's a piece of shit. Fuck him. And then at the end of the game, there's this big open... The end of The Last of Us 1, Ellie asks him, like, hey, are you telling me... Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but she's like, are you telling me the truth? And he's like, uh, yep, absolutely. And she looks at him. It was a great final sequence for a game because she looks at him and she basically says, okay... But you could see the doubt. Like, you could see something's off. You could see that the truth of the situation was going to be a big part of Last of Us 2. Now, in The Last of Us 2, as the game goes on, it is revealed that she, Ellie knew about the truth of what happened before the events of The Last of Us 2 even start. Now, they hold that from us. There's a... There's a conflict at the beginning of the game, and it's very awkward, and Joel and Ellie aren't really uh, friends or really talking much anymore. There's still a connection there, but she's mad at him. He feels weird about the whole thing, and you think, for most of the story, you're led to believe that he overstepped his bounds, like he acted like her dad, and Ellie at this point's in her 20s, right? Like, early 20s? So, it might be just him being like I'm her or Ellie being like I'm not a kid leave me alone but later we find out it's because she knew the truth that Joel murdered a lot of innocent people to save her life and she's racked with this guilt now this is the part I don't really understand about the story maybe I could talk through it maybe it'll help I don't know but in the story very early very in the beginning and it was leaked online there is this group of kids 
that come to Jackson, Wyoming, where Ellie and everyone was holed up, and they get Joel, and they murder him. Like, straight up murder him. This was Abby who did it, and she did it very real. Honestly, the violence in this game is too fucking real. Like, it's brutal. But Abby and all her friends, all her friends are around, or five of their friends are around, while Abby kills Joel with a golf club. It's really gross. She get Abby gets her revenge. And in that room, while this was happening, Ellie saw it before she was knocked out. And Tommy was also there. He was incapacitated as well while Joel was killed. And then this group of people that will later play the game as, it was, they left Ellie and Tommy to live because in their minds, Tommy and Ellie, they didn't do anything. I don't know if they put together that Ellie was the girl who Joel murdered all the people for. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But Joel killed all of her, like, killed her father. She got her revenge. And in their mind, that was the end of it. So these people go back to Seattle where they live. So this is the part I don't like. This is Ellie saying, I'm going to go kill them and get revenge for Joel. And Tommy saying, I really want to go. I Or he's basically, like, trying to make up excuses not to go. Because he has a wife, and I don't know if he has a kid. I don't think he has a kid. But he has a relationship with this woman, and she doesn't like the fact that he's going to, you know, travel through this fucking post-apocalyptic wasteland filled with these zombie mushroom head people to go and get revenge on Joel. She doesn't think that uh, that's a great idea, because he'll probably die. So then there becomes a point where Ellie wakes up. Tommy's gone. He went to do it by himself. Ellie follows with her friend. What's her friend's name? Dina? I'm pretty sure it's Dina. Yeah. So Dina and Ellie go. They're romantically linked, the two of those. Not that that matters at all. But you then play the game in other sequences as Abby. And Abby is, I guess, a soldier for this group in Seattle. Fuck, I forget what they call themselves. But it was after FEDRA, which was the federal government, basically stepped in during the apocalypse scenario in the very beginning you also see them in boston and the fireflies were the resistance group to them this was in the beginning of the last of us one so fedra fell apart and then this is the splinter group that came up after they are in seattle they are locked in a territorial dispute or a fight with people that they call the scars they're only ever called the scars because we're playing from abby's perspective eventually they're called the seraphites and one of the kids there's a whole side story like abby's path is basically she hates these scars tries to kill the scars but then as she is running she finds uh these two people that were scars basically the youngest of the two was shaved their head they weren't allowed to do that they were going to get killed by the scars and they ran so Allie. Abby basically ran into them and saved them. So that was the whole scenario. There, maybe they were both connected at the same time. It was bad. So these are two basically Seraphites who decided to leave that world. They just wanted to go start something else in their own. Abby and her friends get whispers of a firefly encampment because they had previously been fireflies. They got in the idea of encampment. They were going to go there and do it. Anyway, what did I like about this story? Um, I've been I've just been explaining the story, I guess. Whatever. What I like. I liked the shifting perspectives. I liked how I thought this did a great job of showing essentially both sides of a conflict. How it's not that easy to just kill and be like, alright, it's all over. No, you're creating enemies. The second you kill one person, you're creating five enemies. Like I thought that was an interesting perspective. Uh, especially because in that scene when she killed Joel, her friends were going to murder Ellie and they were going to murder Tommy. And they said, no, they had nothing to do with this. Let them live. And they're like, we should not leave any loose ends. And they're absolutely right. They should have fucking killed Ellie and fucking killed Tommy. And that would have been the end of the game, which I guess would have been a bummer. But anyway, Abby's going through this whole world. She and all her friends, all the ones that were there, all get murdered by Ellie. And Abby thought the whole thing was over and done and then she gets thrust into 
Ellie's quest for revenge. They confront, you actually boss fight Ellie as Abby, which is strange. That was a strange moment. And Abby beats a shit at Ellie and says, go home, we're done. She was about to kill her until the seraph she helped said, no, don't do that. This is not worth it. So she let you live again for the second time. You go on your way. Uh, What I loved about the story was that... Ellie is supposed to be the hero and the person you play the game as and you played parts of The Last of Us 1 in her perspective and you played the DLC in her perspective. She's supposed to be the good guy, but I guess that's the point. She's not. She's not good at all. There was a moment in that game where I really hated Ellie. I I did not care for her at all. I thought she was a bigger piece of shit than Joel was in the first game, and that's saying a lot. Um, Joel deserved to die for the things he did. I mean, he probably deserved to die for the things he did before the events of The Last of Us 1. I mean, you don't get that far without, you know, making some enemies. But I love the shifting perspectives and the creating empathy for all sides. I ended up... Because the first part of the game, Abby's the villain, but I never really saw her as that. I saw her as the victim the entire time. Which was, it was very interesting the way it was told. If this was told as a, like, you can go online, look at the cutscene movies. This thing's like 10 hours long. Like, this is a season of a TV show. It's not a movie, which I thought was pretty, there's a bunch of ups and downs. But overall, I thought the story was great. I thought it was told in a great way. I thought it had a it did a great job of creating sympathy, empathy, and also anger for characters on all sides. And it made me care about almost everyone in the story. The people I didn't care about and wanted to die were actually supposed to be the good guys. Crazy. But so I thought that was great. Uh what I did not like about it. Uh the game in general, I I mean the combat and the crafting system were fine they were no different than the last of us one like it was essentially arenas like my my favorite example is the batman like the arkham asylum or arkham knight games where you get into a story mission or an enclosed space and then you get thrust into a room and there's like 10 guys in there and you gotta slowly take them out and like repel and kill them or whatever that's every single part of this game like there were so many sections where you get in and you see like 10 people walk around. You have to slowly take them out. Maybe they're the mushroom head, the infected. Maybe they're human beings with dogs. It just, it doesn't matter. It's just the same over and over again. Throwing bottles, luring people away, killing them silently, crafting the same bullshit over and over. I wasn't impressed with the gameplay. It played well and it worked, sure. But it got to the point where I'm like, oh, God, another spot. I just want to see where the story goes. So it was repetitive. I mean, there were there was also so many goddamn parts where there's like a little animation where you're going into another area. Maybe you're like shimmying through a wall. Maybe you're jumping down a block. Maybe you're moving something to clear a space to get in. And there there must have been 10 times where you get through that area and then immediately attacked by a bad guy or the ground falls out underneath you and you fall or something like that happens. I, they overuse the fuck out of that jump scare tactic. Uh, so strikes against for that. The gameplay, I mean, I felt like a lot of the running time was padded. If you take away the story and me looking for loot, I mean, this is a two-hour-long game, max, max, if you took away the cutscenes, the story, and running around looking for pieces of rags or bottles. So I put through I put up with the gameplay. In the beginning it was fine, but at, towards the end I'm like oh, again with this, really. There were also puzzles a little bit, but they seemed to all be in the beginning of the game, which I thought was very odd. Like there was uh, these generators you had to connect in order to open gates, so you had to like throw them over fences and connect them to these things. And then after those puzzles were pretty much done, the whole game. Maybe there was one or two, but not Nothing like that. Nothing like that many puzzles in a row. Uh, so the gameplay really—it was a sh- 
it's, it was fine, but repetitive. A lot of the sections you could just run through too, which I didn't. That was whatever. But basically, if you play the game on easy and you went around looking for crafting materials, that you could just go into every situation loud and just shoot people or throw bombs at them that you've crafted. And that's it. That's all you have to do. That's like without much worry of dying at all. So it is what it is. If you're in, you don't go into this game for the gameplay experience. Uh, so that's what I didn't like. Uh, the story, like I said, was great. I really was glad Joel was dead. I don't understand the backlash. Uh, I'll leave you guys with this part. There was, throughout the game, Ellie kept trying to get her revenge, and Abby just wanted to move on, and those two collided when Abby confronted Ellie in the theater, and they had their fight, and Abby said, fuck you, I'm done with all this, and walked away, and Ellie was bleeding out. She ended up, there, then there's a flash forward where there, where Ellie and Dina are living this life as parents of this kid in this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. They were living pretty much the ideal, quote unquote, for the time, life. And it seemed like everything was great. It seemed like for the post-apocalypse hellscape you're in now, this is the best it's going to be. So I was really mad that Tommy not only survived that interaction, but then he came back and said, Ellie, this is where Abby is. You got to go kill her now. And it's like, fuck it. Why? This is where I really didn't like Ellie. I was like, why? why? There's been so much death. You killed all of Abby's friends. This enemy, Abby, is a better fighter than you. If you come at her again, you're probably going to fucking die. Why throw everything, possibly throw everything away just to get revenge? Like, the whole time when they were having that conversation, I'm like, oh, obviously Ellie's going to go. But I'm like, why? Just let it go. Abby, let it go. Why can't you let this go? So that's, I was really mad, really unhappy with Ellie at that point. Just a piece of shit. So... Finally, at the end, she comes back to her home, and Jack Ellie comes back to her home where Dina was. It's all cleared out. Dina had enough of her. She moved on. And good. I mean, this was a interesting story about how revenge and personal politics completely consume someone to the point where they can't think or focus on anything else. They can't move on. They can't do anything. Until it's quote unquote resolved. And it's sad. I thought Ellie was an extremely tragic character. I understand all of her motivations and I understand why she did what she did. And it's also another situation like, yeah, it's easy for me to say as an outsider, but I don't know what would happen if I was in Ellie's position. I don't know. But overall... If you haven't played it and you're still not deterred by my spoiler-ridden bullshit I just spouted at you, uh, it's certainly worth playing. It's an achievement in games. It looks very pretty. And maybe this is kind of like a turning point for the industry. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Maybe uh, there'll be games that are more focused towards storytelling. And they start ditching the gameplay. And then maybe there are games that are just like Call of Duty. They're like, we're not doing this we're just doing multiplayer i don't know maybe it'll splinter maybe it won't doesn't matter but uh that's it that's all i have to say about the last of us 2 great game certainly worth playing i have no intention to ever play it again because it was fucking rough so well if if you have different opinions great you can send us an email at plottytime at gmail.com you can hit us up on the socials and tell us why I was 100% right, or why I'm an idiot, I don't really, go ahead, sure, why not, and if you'd like, go head over to our YouTube channel, Plotty Time, and you can listen to all of our episodes while you stare at our logo, like I said, helps you get around those work filters, so go check it out, so that does it for this mini-sode, um, also, if you're into these mini-sodes, let us know, if you hate them, let me know, I don't know if I'll keep doing them, people seem indifferent, so, I don't know, I guess I'll just keep adding some more content for you. Um, next time, 
I'm going to have the first in a series of minisodes, and it's a little bit special. You'll see next week. So take care, be safe, play some games. Talk to you later.